So just take a, a, a wonderful breath here, a deep breath. Release the sound of awe. I dub you the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so as we're opening up our heart with this deep uh, tonal quality of awe, we're becoming aware increasingly that our life is divine. We're becoming aware increasingly that there is a presence that is never an absence. We're becoming aware increasingly that we have emerged from the eternal presence of whatever name you choose to call this presence, love, beauty, intelligence, God Almighty, God all beauty, God all joy. We have emerged from this presence, and though we at times say that we were created in its image and likeness, that means that we have the faculty to think independent of circumstances. Brother Stevie and I were having lunch yesterday, and we were talking about this, and, and he said, in substance, he says, you know, I, I've never seen myself in substance, so I know I'm not, my body is not the image of God, it's the flow of energy that flows through me. So that, so that image is not physical. You don't look in the mirror and say, I look like God, because God is formless, you have a faculty that God has, which is you can right now think independent of any experience that you're growing through and begin to set something new in motion. In other words, as I said a couple of weeks ago, every single moment of your life is a genesis moment, a new beginning based on the thoughts that you're thinking in this instant that will begin uh, to be transmuted into perception, transmuted into experience. This is a genesis moment. Say with me, this is the genesis moment. This is the genesis moment. I choose joy. I choose love. I choose peace. Peace, I choose abundance, wellness and well-being, and it's happening right now. This is my Genesis moment. I begin again. And so in the feeling tone of that, we come to a deeper understanding of the theme of the month, which is the art of letting go. Remember? All spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment is about letting go of something. It's not about gaining or getting anything because you have emerged from the eternal with everything. With what? Everything. You've emerged from the eternal with what? Everything. What? Everything. You have emerged from the eternal with all that the presence is. You lack nothing. Intrinsic to your being is intelligence and love and power and peace. And so the art of letting go is about letting go of that which doesn't serve you, misperceptions about yourself, misidentification with who and what you think you are. In other words, we all have temporary identities. We're masculine, we're feminine, we're a combination of both. We're black, white, straight, gay, uh, trans. Uh, we've born in different parts of the world. Those are all powerful lampshades through which the spirit of the living God gets to shine through, but they're not our permanent identity. They are our temporary identities that are lampshades through which life gets to shine through. So we're letting go of the over-identification with the temporary. We celebrate it. We embrace it. We love it. Yes! But we begin to more and more and more through prayer, through meditation, through study, through hanging with high and holy people. That's not pious and religious people, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not even going to get into that. But anyway, we're talking about people that are on the verge of great discovery of who and what they are and what they represent as an emergent being from the great luminosity, the light that lights every man, every woman, every individual that comes to the planet as we begin to identify with our true nature and our being and we let go of the, of the, 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 the little identifications. I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. They don't like me. You know, we let go of the little identifications. Then, and, and we begin to discover that there is something within us and that we're surrounded by a field of infinite potential. We're surrounded by a field of infinite possibilities, you see. Now, I want you to catch something right here. And we get to choose a possibility. 
We're surrounded by a field of infinite possibilities, so we're choosing a high possibility. And when we begin to let go and let God, we begin to let go of that which no longer serves us, we begin to vibrate at a higher frequency, and you will discover something that you won't have to make something happen. You're discovering that you're allowing that which is in the field of infinite possibilities begins to match your vibration for manifestation. Oh, let me, let me, okay, this is, this is, this is it. This is, this is what's happening. Look, 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 look. I don't have to make this paper push it to the ground. No, it's in a field called gravity. I just have to let go. You see, it's a feel. We are surrounded by a feel of infinite potential, infinite possibilities. I don't have to make anything happen. I have to lift my vibration and the feel takes over. I don't, I don't have to make this paper go to the ground. I gotta force this to the ground. I gotta make it happen. I gotta make it happen. Now I gotta let go. And then the feel takes over. So, so we are letting go of the ballast. We're letting go of the gravitational pull of that which no longer serves us so that the field lifts us into a wider a manifestation of more good than we could possibly imagine. Say it with me this morning, I let go and let God. I let go and let love. I let go and let beauty. Abundance. My body can heal anything. And so, so with this awareness, we come into the greatest story ever told. That's the topic of the day. Now, all of us got stories. You know, we got all kinds of stories about what's happened to us, what they did to us, what they said about us. We want to let go of all the sad sack stories that we tell ourselves unless... You're with your spiritual practitioner and you're unraveling the lies that are in the middle of your stories. A lie is something that is not coherent with the fundamental harmony of your being. You're worthless. You don't matter. You're not enough. Uh, 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 the lack of self, spiritual self-esteem, those are all lies that have come into focus based on a misinterpretation of experience and the unhealing of trauma and drama, etc. So you let go of the stories unless you're sharing with somebody that can lift you above it, so, or unless you're sharing a testimony of how you got over but to continue to share stories, 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 stories of how bad it is. <laughs> is choosing a possibility in the field of infinite possibility that you don't want to keep experiencing over and over again. In other words, get out of Groundhog Day and begin to lift your vibration to a higher frequency of life. Can I get a yes on that? And so as you begin to, to understand the greatest story ever told is the story that you tell yourself about yourself that is real. That's the greatest story ever told. The story you tell yourself about yourself that is true and that is real on a regular basis, not a one-off. Not just on Sundays with us when we're doing affirmations, but on a regular basis, especially when life is intense and the default emotional patterns that would say everything is going to hell in a handbasket. I don't know why we keep having to have this handbasket. But anyway, (laughs) particularly when things are intense, if you can begin to tell yourself a different story, boy, I'm going to be strong when I come through this. I'm going to be brilliant with so much light as I embrace the lesson and the blessing that's in this experience. Uh, You begin to tell yourself a different story, a different vibratory frequency. And so the one story we have to tell ourselves is this life is a gift and I'm going to re-gift it. Now, not the kind of re-gifting that you do when somebody gives you a gift you don't want it, you just pass it along. (laughs) I'm not talking about that kind of gift. Your life is a gift. You did not create yourself. You've emerged from the eternal. And so all that you really are is a gift from the eternal presence. 
And as you wake up on a regular basis and say, my life, the story I'm telling myself, my life is a gift. How can I re-gift this life that has been given me? You will be given knowledge, transformational knowledge and insights and revelations, visions about how you as a distinct unit of infinite potential get to share your gift like no one else gets to share it because there's no one else exactly like you. But that's the story you have to tell yourself. I, my life is a gift. Say it. My life is a gift. My life is a gift. I'm going to re-gift it. Now, the moment you begin to get into the feeling tone of that, you're tapping into the field of abundance. You're tapping into the field of you have more than enough. You have, you're tapping into the field of the overflow. You're not living from scarcity, which is a mental a perception of separation from God. You're tapping into abundance. My life is a gift. I want to re-gift it. And so, as I said earlier, you're in this field of infinite possibilities. You get to choose one. Einstein used to say that God does not play dice with the universe. Yes, God does. <laughs> Einstein was wrong because he only went so far. He didn't get to quantum reality, you see? In other words, in the quantum field, there's a field of infinite possibilities. You have free will to choose any possibility that you want. God is playing dice with the universe through you. There's a field of indeterminacy that's discovered in quantum reality that you get to choose because the spirit of the living God does not create robots and automatons. God, you've emerged from the presence with all that the presence is, but you've got to choose it. You've got to say yes to it. You've got to surrender to it. You've got to allow it. And then there's the outpicturing of the field of infinite possibilities according to your particular template held in the infinite. Whoa, that was a lot of information. Yeah. 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 So, story number one, my life is a gift, and I'm here to re-gift it. Story, good story number two is I allow myself to reunite with that part of me that's in the unknown. This is, this is deep. You already know what you know, but you don't know what you don't know. You are allowing yourself to reunite with the part of you that's in the realm of the unknown. That's where the solutions are. That's where the gifts are. That's where guidance is coming from in a language and in a way that you can understand, but it's not coming from your present paradigm, your, your, your present point of view. You're willing to reunite with a part of you that's in the unknown right now, so it takes you outside of your present paradigm and you begin to catch and be captured by fiery ideas and, and, and visions that you can't even think about in your present point of view. That present point of view is, is Groundhog Day. You're living the same thing over and over, you have the same thoughts over and over, same conversations over and over and over and over and over and over. You must say to yourself, I am willing to reunite, unite, reunite with that part of myself that's outside of the known. I remember a number of years ago, I was seeing this, our, our Native American brother, First Nation brother, who's on this television show, and he had a chalkboard. And he went to the chalkboard, and he put a dot in the middle of the chalkboard. And he said, this is what we know. The rest of the chalkboard represents what we don't know. When you come to that understanding, then your prayer, your meditation, your spiritual practice is about opening yourself up to what you don't know right now. It, it hasn't been curated into your awareness, you see. And, and, and now what are you doing? You're on the verge and the edge of constantly unfolding. You're choosing to become a greater expression of yourself. Now, why is this important? Example, caterpillar. If, it's, if it tries to stay within its own little perception, oh, I'm running out of food. What am I going to do? Oh, God. It's so long to get to that next group of bushes. Oh, my God. 
I got to figure this out. This lack and this limitation, this scarcity, there's not enough to go around. But something stirs within it. It spins, it's chrysalis. And ultimately comes a new creature in God. It becomes a butterfly. The solution was in the caterpillar all the time, but not within its present form. It had to become more of itself. Every issue that you have, is a vibrational demand for you to become more you. It's not, it's not just for you to figure out how to solve this. It is for you to become more you. Oh, it's scary. Yes, it is. It's scary. It's, 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 it's a, the ego is nervous. It starts to shake. Oh, my God, she's growing. Ooh, 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 he's about to change. Oh, I, can't, I cannot protect him outside of the known. I got to give him a defense mechanism, a coping mechanism. Oh, he's getting too close. Let me give her a, com a, a compulsive behavior. Let me give her something that's going to keep her the same and not change. No, 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 no. You are saying in substance, I want to be reunited with the part of me that I don't even know about. I don't even know it yet. It's, it's, woo, it's magnificent. It's, I've heard about it. I've heard about it by the hearing of the ears. Is it not written ear, God? I've heard it by the hearing of the ears. The ground upon which you're standing is holy. I've heard about it through the hearing of the ears. The kingdom of God is within. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I've heard about it. But can I step into it? Can I pray and actually live from that domain? If you say it and with conviction, let's say it together. Say, I am willing to be reunited, reunited. with that part of myself that's in the unknown. Let's say it two more times. I am willing to be reunited, reunited. with that part of myself that's in the unknown. One more time, I am willing to be reunited with that part of myself that resides in the unknown. Reunited. Good. Reunited like you know it should. You got it. Sometimes you got to sing yourself into the answer. <laughs> but, but, but if you live at that dynamic... And as we as a people, and I'm talking about the globe, I'm talking about all the thousands of people that are tuning in right now, as we as a people begin to vibrate at a higher level, we'll have another story. And that story will be not about, this, no, this story will be about the power of people, not about the people in power. We spend a lot of time talking about the elite and the people in power and how they're controlling our life. But the citizens of the world, we will begin to wake up and we'll say there's people power, not just about the people in power that have a pseudo power that's not backed by integrity, not backed by love, not backed by peace, not backed by compassion, kindness, and generosity. That means it's a pseudo temporary power. It's not even a power, it's a force, and a force that has to be used to keep people dumbed down in fear, anxiousness, anxiety, drugged up, fast food up, so they can't think properly. No, as we wake up, as we wake up and begin to realize that we are being reunited with a power that's unknown to our present perception. We're opening ourselves up and we're telling ourselves the greatest story that's ever told is the story of who and what we really are. We're telling our, talking to ourselves about ourselves. Now we're talking about the, the power of people. Not the people in power. Yes, Pseudo power. Something begins to happen. And then we'll rise up. And that which is not in harmony with the fundamental harmony of the universe. That which is systemically out of alignment. With peace and love and generosity and goodwill. Will begin to crumble. For as our attention becomes more and more and more on the vision of who we are, more and more and more on what is trying to express through us, then our 
against consciousness, against what we don't like, which keeps things going, by the way. If you want to keep something going, fight against it. You want to keep something going, try to avoid it. If you, avoidance makes it a little more alive. But if you start to shift your attention to the possibility, how can I live my life? What gift can I give? How can we come together? People all around, how can we come together and see the new world? See the possibility. Then by lack of vibrational attention, the old crumbles, dissolves. And the new, which is, which is here right here, now here, the new is here. Let me tell you something right now. In the old Newtonian model of reality, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. But in the quantum reality, two things can occupy the same space at the same time because they're on different vibrations, you see? So as you begin to hold the space within yourself, I'm willing to unite with that part of myself that's in the unknown. I'm telling myself a story about my life is a gift and I have something to give. You begin to vibrate at the level of love and peace for yourself and all people. You start to vibrate at a different frequency. And so both things are occupying the same space, same time, different frequencies, different dimensions. Remember, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Oh, today we would say, you know, in this unified field of awareness, this quantum reality, there are many dimensions. Infinite. I go into a higher place. I'm waiting for y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Come on. I'm waiting for y'all. Now, so therefore, you have to get to a place if you're seeing that you're spending more energy in fighting something than you are embracing what's trying to emerge. You understand? Caterpillar, you know, this is all instinctual, of course. It's not fighting the fact that, it, you know, there's no more foliage on the trees because it's eaten it all. It's something starts to curate within it and it becomes a different creature in Christ, a different creature in the chrysalis, a different, ooh, something else emerges, you see. And so how do we do this? One, you, one, when we're going through something intense, and if, first of all, everything begins within. We have to actually, we can't, we, we can um, talk about possibilities, but inside we have to actually uh, become, we have to actually integrate, you see. And so in our individual lives, we have, we have to come to an awareness. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it as I'm speaking, so I'm just why I'm pausing a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, so we, here, it's coming, it's coming. Let me just give it a second, okay? So, um, it says, carry on. It's going to get to me in a second. <laughs> here it is. Whatever you're growing through, you don't label it. You have a complete embracing of it without labeling. And as you're embracing without labeling, then the intensity of the experience will be transmuted into a higher frequency. But if you labor it, oh, this is painful. Oh, this is a disease. The doctors have called it this. The doctors have called it that. Once you label it, you become at one with it. But if you just say, oh, it's intense. And then you embrace the intensity. Oh, this is intense right now. And you embrace, you don't deny that it's intense. But you don't have to label it anything. Don't label it. Just embrace as you observe and as you're uh, embracing that you're growing, developing, and unfolding. You will discover that those energies and those thought forms that have coagulated into what the spirit uh, uh, materia medica says it's a disease through through uh, 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 through through spiritual uh, spiritual medica will begin to be transmuted. Mm, that's good. There, you understand what I'm saying? We're so quick to label anything we're going through bad. Why don't we just say it's intense? It's interesting. I I I can't wait till I grow out of this. I can't wait to see the miracle. I can't wait to see how God shines through me that I may glorify the presence with a testimony of wholeness and healing and right action in my life. This is where you want to live. 
And then as, as Coop Blackson and I were talking recently as he was on my podcast and I was on his podcast, one of the things that came up was if you have total, total acceptance is the antidote to resistance. That if you're fighting something, then you create resistance. But if something's going on, you just have acceptance. Not acceptance that it's going to last forever. But this, this, this is the way, this is what's going on right now. It's like today. We couldn't get into the sanctuary at, at the time we thought we could. We just like what's told. We're just going to be nimble. We're going to be creative. We're going to, you know, uh, move in a flexible kind of way rather than, oh, this, what's, oh what's going on? Oh, what's happening? Oh, da, da. No, that, that's not acceptance. That's complaining. Couldn't do, couldn't do anything about it. People, I mean, you know, that's it's, it's what happens. You work. And you work with people and you grow with people. It's all good. You all having a good time, right? Yeah. You're here. You're now. So we have total acceptance. And then that becomes uh, an antidote to any resistance that's coming up within us. The resistance to change. The resistance to movement. Everything is always changing and moving. If you want anything that is just unchangeable. I'm not going to say nothing negative about this. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it ain't never going to happen. <laughs> because the constant in the world of phenomena is change. And the only where place there isn't any change is in the presence of God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as you lift your vibration and frequency and come into the awareness of the timeless place within you, then you're able to move through the world of, the cha through, of changes with grace, dignity, and integrity. Wow. You know? Now, here's the deal. I'm trying to hear this again. Now, 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 oh, here it is. Here it is. It's coming. <laughs> Planet vibrating higher than it's ever been. That means time has changed. Do you realize the year is almost over? How did that happen? The time, we have a different relation to time right now. Time is the mental construct that's the distance between objects and the, the, the duration of a particular thought or perception. That's what, that's, that's, that's what time is. Other than that, it doesn't exist. It's, everything is timeless, and there's no distance between us because at the center, we're one. So the vibration of the planet has been lifted. The universe is, 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 is expanding, which means that there's less time. I'm not saying you're running out of it. I'm saying it's, it's, the frequency is different. Now, what does this mean? That means if you hold a feeling and a thought about something good, it's going to happen faster. It's going to happen a lot faster now. I mean, we may think, think back 10 years ago. If a politician lied, you may not find out about it for five or 10 years. <laughs> but time has changed. As Steve and I were talking yesterday, everything is relevatory now. You can see him lying when he's talking. <laughs> How do you know when most politicians are lying? They're talking. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can see it right in front of you. Just, he just said something different yesterday. What's he talking about? Now, I'm not just, I mean, there are some statesmen, there are some people who are in integrity and trying to support their constituents, so I'm not putting them all down, you know. But I'm just saying that the relevatory expression of truth, it, it, things are more transparent now because the vibration of the planet is much higher. That means if you devote just a little bit of, little bit of your time to coming into the greatest story ever told, the story you tell yourself about yourself that is true. You spend just a, a little bit of time in letting go of that which doesn't serve you. Uh, you, 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 you have a, just a little bit of time of asking, let, let, me, let me reunite with that part of myself that's in the unknown right now. I'm, I'm, I'm unafraid, I'm willing to go into regions of myself that I don't even know about yet. I'm all right with that. You spend just a, a little tiny bit of time. What you think is a little time will take you into the eternal, into the timeless. I, I shared this one story that I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I remember coming home from a, a meditation retreat a number of years ago. And so I came home, 
I had some guests in the living room that had stopped by to see me. So I said, hold on a second. I want to put my bags back in my bedroom. So I go back in the bedroom and put the bags down. And inexplicably, I just felt like I needed to lay down for a moment. So I laid down on my back. And all of a sudden, my heart started beating really fast. My hands got extremely hot. And I was lifted into this dynamic, luminous light. That's all I could see. And so I said, wow, I'm in the presence. I'm in the presence of the Christ. So I started to ask questions. Before I could articulate the question, the answer came. And it kept coming and coming. All these answers kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And this went on for what appeared to be a long time. So this thought went across my awareness. You're being rude to the people in your living room. (laughs) And the moment that thought I became aware of that thought going through my mind. I started to become aware of my body again. I got lowered into the body. My hands got hot. My heart was beating. And then everything normalized. And then I ran into the living room. And I apologized for keeping them waiting for so long. I said, but you have nothing to worry about. I've just been told that we are eternal beings. We unfold forever. There's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as loss. You know, we live in a limited point of view. And we experience that limitation. But if we break out of it, we can be free and happy. Now, now I'm going on. I'm going on and on and on. They're just staring at me. <laughs> because for them... I had been gone two minutes. For me, I was in this thing for a long time, so it was all relative based on perception. Time is shifting. Give yourself some time to break into the eternal. Pray every day. Tell yourself the greatest story about yourself every day. Have a moment of meditation every day. And when you don't, don't beat yourself up. Don't use, that as a, a, don't use yourself as a whipping post. Oh, I, I forgot to meditate today. Oh, my God, I'm a bad person. No, we're not that kind of religion. <laughs> we just get up and do it again. You just get up and do it again. This is my Genesis moment. I begin again. And you keep on beginning again and again and again and again until it becomes habit. Remember what Lao Tzu says, that your, your thought ultimately becomes your speech. Your speech will become your action. Your action will become your habits. Your habits will become your character. Your character will become your destiny. So you, just, you start to just curate your thoughts, tell yourself the good story. Eventually, that's, what, that's the way you're speaking about yourself, you see? And then that will lead to higher levels of right action. You start to develop different habits. Your character will change. People won't recognize you. Aren't you the guy that used to? No. No, he dead. <laughs> this is the resurrection one. <laughs> he dead. I'm here now. I might have a few scars, but I'm alive. My destiny is different. Oh my God, I love God. My destiny is different. And I want you to know that you Wherever you are on this planet, right here in the sanctuary or anywhere on the planet, you have a great destiny. Don't be fooled by genetic markings and heredity. Don't be fooled by that. We have the mystics have been saying for years, know thyself and you'll be free. Now the epigenetics people are coming forward and saying, you know what? You may have a predisposition to something. You may have a predisposition to diabetes or whatever, but that predisposition is not your destiny. It has to be activated. How is it activated? Through fear, doubt, worry, anxiousness, gossip, stealing. You, you put yourself in a lower frequency, yeah, you'll, 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 you'll activate that stuff. But let me tell you something else. You got a predestination to greatness. <laughs> you got a predisposition to beauty and love and harmony and wholeness. You got a predisposition. That's you. For so much more than you can even imagine outside of what you know about yourself right now. You have a predisposition to beauty. Oh, let's activate that. Let's choose that. Let's say yes to that. And stand up with a greater awareness that life is for me. Nothing is against me. There's nothing outside of the infinite. Oh, 
nothing. Ooh, okay. All right, all right. Take this, 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 take that breath again. Breathe in, release. Once again, release. Again, release. Wrap your arms around yourself for a moment and realize that you are wonderfully made for you have emerged from the presence that is never an absence. Realize that, just begin to be aware that you matter, you're, you're significant. The presence of God doesn't make question marks, the presence of God makes exclamation points. You are to glorify the presence by becoming an exclamation point for love and the beauty, compassion, generosity, high levels of forgiveness, joy. Oh my God. So as you're embracing yourself right now, I want you to feel that you're at the center of the universe. Now how can we say that? Because the center is everywhere and the circumference is nowhere. Say, I'm at the center, I'm at the center. and I'm a center of God's love. I'm at the center, I'm at the center. I'm at the center. and I am a center of God's peace, center of God's, peace. God's, joy. God's joy, intelligence, intelligence. Abundance. abundance, and more than I can comprehend in this second. Let me, Let me reunite with that part of myself, that part of myself. That's, in that's in the unknown. So as we stop in this moment, we rise high in this vibration of prayer and we give thanks. We allow ourselves to be grateful. We've heard the words in substance by a master, a master teacher. I give thanks that thou hearest me always. Lawfully, it means... As I'm rising in gratitude, the, the divine law matches that frequency and we get more to be grateful for. Ooh, that's something. You just, when you hear that, if you become grateful, the universal presence through universal law is going to give you more to be grateful for. You have no idea of the blessings of grace that are trying to come into your life. But you actually have to prepare yourself and consciously participate in the realm of good, all good. So we can become grateful. Become grateful for anything right now. Just feel gratitude. I'm not saying you're not growing through something. I'm not saying there's not any issues you have to deal with. I'm not saying there aren't challenges. Whereas the image and likeness of God, those individuals that can think, you're, you're now thinking a new thought. You're now... Oh, I, I don't know why I'm grateful. I'm just becoming grateful for no reason at all. And this consciousness of gratitude, my perceptual windows become so clean and clear. Oh my God, I understand what Meister Eckhart meant when he said, God sees me through the same eye that I see God. Inseparability. So we recognize this great presence that's called recognition. Recognition. Feel at one with his presence. And the very word that's being spoken, the soul, your logos, <laughs> the vibrational frequency. As the Holly girls were saying, of Mayat, <laughs> something wonderful is happening. Say it, something wonderful is happening. Something magnificent is happening. And it wants to happen through me. And it wants to happen as me. So as I am speaking this very word with the full awareness that something wonderful is happening, I know this word is now serving as a law of elimination to anything that would hinder, delay, obstruct, deny the fullness of life from flowing through us right now. Everything is working together for our good, for all things work together for good, for they who love God are living, answering the call ooh, to their higher purpose. Something magnificent is taking place. Oh, we, this is feel now. Every organ action function of our body temple is made every whole. This is accept that. Let's accept it. 
We're not dealing with a material medica right now. We're dealing with spiritual medica. There's a perfect pattern of our life hid with Christ in God, hid with perfection. We're activating that perfect pattern right now. Every organ action function of our body temple is coming into the vibrational frequency of wholeness mentally, emotionally, physically. Ooh, all of our subtle bodies are coming into alignment with the celestial body. All back with. Come on, be quiet now. I'm trying to stop, but I can't stop. Something wonderful is happening. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Something wonderful is happening. Oh, the, 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 the realm of the miraculous wants us to be lifted up to receive and allow it. Oh, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. It's happening now. We are allowing grace to take over our lives. Now. Oh, right now. Right now. Woo. Win. 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 Right now. Oh, come on. Ebony, Marianne, help them feel it. not made with hands. The city of light and love and beauty that we're seeking to manifest on earth as it is in the highest of the highest. And in this moment of coherence around harmony and wellness and well-being, we embrace these individuals on our prayer list.